It is a great honor to be here at the Human Rights Summit at this time when the UN General Assembly is taking place across the street. I would like to thank the organizer for giving me this opportunity to speak. I consider it my duty and privilege to speak the truth on behalf, behalf of in, uh, Tibetans in Tibet because they have no freedom of speech. As someone who enjoys full freedom of speech, I will tell you what they cannot. My name is Nawang Sangdo. I was born in Lhasa, the capital city of Tibet. My father used to teach me about Tibetan history and culture. He was an honest and brave man, and his words influenced me as I grew older. As I was born in such a family, I was naturally influenced by my family. As I grew older, I was filled with pain to see my country under foreign rule, my culture being destroyed my people being suppressed. Therefore, I took part in several peaceful protests against China's brutal occupation of Tibet. In 1990, I participated in a peaceful protest in Lhasa. I and a group of nuns shouted, Independence Tibet, and long live the His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Within seconds, I was arrested and then beaten and tortured. During the initial detention, the authorities would beat me with iron rods, water hose, and many different kinds of weapons almost every day. Kicking and slapping were so usual that they didn't even count as beatings. There's one experience I remember very clearly. One day, the authorities brought a strange object that looked like a telephone. It was actually an electric prod. The guard asked me, do you want to call your home? I replied, my home doesn't have telephone. He said, don't worry, I will insult one. Then he put the object into my shirt and turned it on. My entire body shook and shrank in a way I couldn't control. That was my first electric shock. At that time, I was 13 years old. Right after my first release from prison in 1991, Due to much harassment of Chinese authorities, my mother died. My father passed away at home after he spent eight years in prison. My father, my uncle, and my brother all spent years in Chinese prison for Tibetan freedom and human rights. The second time I was arrested, I was 15 years old and sentenced to three years. My initial three-year sentences was later increased to 23 years. During my life in prison, I endured regular interrogations, beatings, torture, hunger, and solitary confinement. When I was released in 2002, due to great international pressure, I had spent 11 years of my life in Chinese jail. I now live in freedom, but every day I worried about thousands of Tibetans who are still suffering today, this very minute, for simply expressing their desire for freedom and devotion to the Dalai Lama. 
Many people, ho has, many people have lost their lives. Many are arrested and many will lose their lives and be arrested until Tibet is free. I want no one in Tibet and no one in this world to suffer the way I did. Therefore, I urge the United Nations and the global community to help secure the release of those prisoners and urge China to allow human rights in Tibet. Today, the Chinese government is waging a campaign to destroy Tibetans' culture, language, and religion. The Chinese government has decided to firstly resettle all of Tibet's 2 million nom nomads by, 2000, by 2015. By ending this nomadic way of life, the Chinese government wants to clear the way for mining, damming, and other kinds of exploitation that cause damage to the environment. This is creating serious environmental destruction on the Tibetan plateau, which is the source of many rivers that feed half of Asia. Therefore, the issue of Tibet is deeply tied to the future of the world. I urge you all to support a political resolution for Tibet that will eventually protect our human rights, environment, and culture. Thank you. Thank you so much.